Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another Falconry video. Today's video is about what falconry actually is, but I'm going to go more in depth than that and actually talk about some really important principles that I hope by sharing uh, can actually make a difference in communities beyond just falconry. Now, <clears throat> um, with that being said, I want to say thank you everybody for who who is making suggestions in the comments on new videos. I'm working on a lot of new videos uh, that are all half done because again, I'm getting footage uh, and, and so I've got a lot of half finished projects. I read all of these comments and I definitely love knowing what people are wanting to see and what people would like more help with. Uh, even if I don't respond, I get really busy, uh, but I, I definitely appreciate that and please make more suggestions and remind me and we can get as many of these topics uh, up as possible. Uh, all these videos I'm making are not meant to be like, Ooh, falconry, you know, that I'm just trying to get good information or maybe I should say useful information out and available to as many people as possible. And that being said as well, I know there's so many different ways to approach falconry. And when I share these videos, my, my intent is not to say, this is the way. Uh, I'm just sharing ways that either I know that work or that I've seen that work and to try to help. Uh, and I totally acknowledge there's other ways. So today's topic, talking about what is falconry. Uh, I want to address a problem, but first I want to give the simplest definition I can. True falconry is hunting with a trained raptor. You could uh, maybe push that a little further and say training and building a relationship of trust with a raptor and then pursuing game with that raptor. Uh, so the hunting is what falconry is. Now, people who are unfamiliar with falconry sometimes don't understand that principle and say, it's wrong that you would hunt with a raptor. Well, that's what raptors do in the wild. Every day, they are hunting in order to survive. And so all you're doing is building trust and putting yourself into that equation between predator and prey and you and making a, a loop to uh, do that. So falconry is about hunting. Now, if you're going for linguistic purity, I know there's people out there that get extremely picky. For example, let's say you're a falconer, a person who trains and hunts with birds of prey. Let's say you have a 30-year-old Harris hawk that's getting rickety. You still take it out flying, but it's getting slow and achy enough that it can't bind to game. It just can't quite make it. But you're still exercising that bird using falconry equipment, falconry techniques. Somebody might say, that's not falconry. Linguistically speaking, de by definition, no, it is not. But the person might be a falconer who is exercising an elderly bird that uh, is not fast enough to catch game anymore. Um, so that's just an example of some people who are very hyper-focused on definitions will say that. And if they do, they're technically right. But this bigger, broader picture there are many different people who work with raptors. Uh, a few that I'm going to use in this video, of course, falconers, people who hunt, train with and hunt birds of prey. There are wildlife rehabilitators whose goal is they're bringing in or have brought to them injured wildlife that they're trying to nurse back to health and get released back into the wild. They, in that process, may use falconry equipment or certain handling tech, falconry handling techniques, but they're not doing falconry. Uh, you have wildlife educators. Uh, I'm a wildlife educator. I have, I hunt with birds of prey and do falconry, but I also have several separate permits and do wildlife education, which is where you are holding, <clears throat> working, flying with birds of prey that have falconry equipment. You're training with falconry techniques, but it's technically not falconry. And you have Bird banders, uh, privately and groups like Hawk Watch International that go out and will trap migrating birds or even baby birds, put a band on them, record the weight, record the, the length, all the details, the band number, and release them back as part of uh, keeping tabs on wildlife numbers. The, in that process, they may use equipment, handling techniques, or restraining techniques and devices that are from falconry, but it's not falconry. And of course, zoos and aviaries as well will often keep raptors, birds of prey, and they may use falconry techniques. They may be using falconry gloves, jesses, swivel, leashes, hoods uh, is part of their work, but it's not technically falconry. Doesn't matter. 
but it's important to understand that. It does, falconry is not like, oh, falconry is, is where it's at. And all those others are lesser. No, I'm just saying if, you, if you're working at a zoo and you're holding a bird with just a swivel leash, that's not falconry. You're just using falconry techniques to manage, to properly manage your bird because those techniques work. So knowing that definition is good, but it's also important to understand a, a danger that comes. When you are understanding any of these groups, falconry included, you need to understand the impact that raptors have. Raptors, let's be honest, are beautiful, inspiring, they're cool, they're epic. That's why you see them everywhere. Even deity figures, look at Zeus, shown with a golden eagle. Look at the god Horus, pictured with the head of a falcon, or sometimes depicted as a falcon. Uh, a lot of angelic beings and a lot of demonic beings will be pictured with large raptor-like wings. So we know throughout history, we see this. Look at flagpoles and coats of arms. We have, you might have an eagle behind the coat of arms of a king, or we put a statue of an eagle on a flagpole. There's more powerful predators. What about a bear? A grizzly bear is way more powerful than an eagle. But you're, there's a bear on a flagpole? You never see that, do you? You see an eagle. There's something about putting that stamp of approval uh, of, an, of a bird of prey that makes something more epic, more glorious. This is cool that we have that knowledge and it's good to recognize it. And it's important that we're careful no matter whether you are a falconer or somebody who handles birds who's not a falconer, because there is so much ego attached to raptors, right? Now, if you are a falconer, let's let's say you're a falconer in the United States where you have a lot of hoops, legal hoops to jump through. You work your way up, you get, uh, you know, you pass a falconry test, you get your equipment, you get a sponsor to sign off on you, you get your first bird. You've done some work. It is okay to be proud of the work that has gotten you there. But then now you're sitting there and you're like, I, oh, I have this red-tailed hawk. Wow. Is it cool? Yes. Is it understandable to be proud of your work that you've done there? Yes. The problem is holding a bird. Suddenly it's almost like, oh, this bird is cool. Therefore, I am cool because I am holding it. You know what? Maybe you are cool. But what happens is this strange psychology, and the best way I can say is go and watch uh, on Netflix, uh, Tiger King. If you haven't seen it, there's these different big cat groups, and all of them have evolved into this, I am the greatest, I am, ooh, I am the keeper of the tigers, look at me, ooh, and they all hate the other groups, because the other groups also have that same glory. So let me tell you what I tell my falconry apprentices. And also when I work in wildlife education is what I tell my staff coming in. I'm like, you don't ever lean on your bird for, for glory or to seem cool. You instead be cool. You be epic. Um, here's you, a falconer. Here's the bird. Let both of you be epic, not like, oh, I have to rely on the glory of this animal to feel like I have self-worth, to feel like I am special in the eyes of the public or in the eyes of other animal trainers. You don't want to do that. You want to be a great falconer based off of saying, hey, you know what? I did work hard. I have learned many techniques and I'm open-minded. I'm going to learn. I, if I'm wrong, oh, I will learn that. If other falconers give me some advice, I'll listen to what they have to say. Even if I disagree, I should do that instead and, and just love the birds and respect that other people love the birds and work with them as well. Don't lean on the glory. Be amazing yourself and let the bird you train be amazing and you be two amazing life forms together rather than, I always have to be holding my bird in front of people. Oh, look, I, oh, I'm special. It's like the bird's special. People care about you for you. And if all you're doing is trying to share and and to have the glory of something else, like, look, our flag is mighty because there's an eagle on top of it. If you're personifying that yourself, 
It's not a healthy way to do. Again, Tiger King, I, uh, it was a good eye-opening series because I can explain to people now, watch Tiger King, you see how these different people with big cats in, the, in this particular series interacted and reacted towards each other? That's what raptor people are like, but raptor people are usually not that bad. But it's a similar danger that you have to watch out for. So let me give you kind of an example of what I mean. Between falconers, wildlife rehabilitators, wildlife educators, bird banders, uh, bird banding organizations, and zoos and aviaries, all these different groups of field biologists, and even, I'll even add to that, um, a division of uh, uh, wildlife officers and uh, wildlife law administrators, all of these... I've met some individuals in all of these groups where they themselves are like, uh -huh, I am the bird person. I am the person who gets to look. I'm working with this amazing animal. And people are like, yeah, that's so cool. Look at this selfie I took as an officer that I got to help an eagle. Ha ha. Look, I look what what I do for work, or a falconer with an eagle. I'm an eagle falconer in America, where it's very hard to, but I've done the work to do it. We are all uh, have the, the, the temptation to slip into that way of being, but what's really terrifying is when people who are like that in these groups feel become where it becomes so much a part of their identity, I am only special if I am the falconer. If I am, I am the savior wildlife rehabilitator. I am the wildlife officer who is, uh, administers the law or is above the law. You know, whoever you are, I banned birds. You know, whoever you are, if, you, if that becomes your identity so much in your self-worth that you become threatened by anybody else doing it, that is really bad. And it's shameful. It's really shameful. Um... Uh, if you get into this, if you become a falconer, you will see all these different groups ripping on each other, putting each other down. Pfft, I'm a falconer. Oh, stupid rehabilitators don't even know how to upkeep a bird properly. Where meanwhile, the rehabbers, stupid falconer, all they care about is having a bird and getting a selfie with it while I'm doing the work to actually help animals. Where so maybe a bird banner is like, oh, stupid falconers and rehabilitators, birds should only belong in the wild. And look at me, I banned them, but I would never keep one. It's wrong to do so. Or a zoo, somebody works at a zoo, I'm all about conservation. All of the rest of you are a drain on society, but I am holy in my cause and what I do. You see that, and it's terrible. Now, let me show you the flip of what's trying to happen. In all of these groups, there's good people who are really trying to build bridges and to say, you know what? If I interact with birds in one way and you do a different way, what do we both have in common? Passion. We both love the animals. So why don't we be open up and friendly? Why don't we build each other up and collaborate together? We all care about these animals. Why don't we do so? And I see this. The, one of my favorite examples currently is falconers and wildlife rehabilitators trying to come together to where a rehabilitator will say, look, and this has been recent legal permission from the government to make this happen, to make this possible. Uh, you have a bird that is, it, the rehabilitator has fixed the wounds or injuries. So bodily, the bird is healed up, but it's weak muscle-wise. Muscular uh, atrophy has happened, and this bird is not in any shape to hunt. And rather than just like, well, we're going to stick a rabbit in its flight pen and see if it kills it, uh, it, in many states now, a rehabilitator can say, look, hey you, falconer, why don't you take this bird for two, three months, train it, exercise it, get it hunting, demonstrate that it conclusively can hunt difficult prey, then give it back to me, the wildlife rehabilitator, and I will go set it free. I think that's wonderful. It's best of both worlds. It's people helping each other out. Uh, we, we, no matter what your reason for getting into this, it's good to have an understanding of that, that people who are in a different field than you, but still are working with birds of prey, with raptors, have passion as well. Respect their passion. Try to build friendships and build bridges, even if you don't agree with everything everybody does in a certain way. Build those bridges and we can accomplish so much more together. Now, another another very important point about that 
is now that I've been doing this enough years that I've witnessed people get into working with and handling raptors through whatever they are exposed to. But that may not be the field that is best for them. For example, you're an animal lover, you meet a falconer somewhere, you get talking, you're like, wow, I could work with, with, with raptors? Wow. You end up getting your falconry license, but it turned, because you met a falconer, that was your first introduction. But you know what? Maybe it turns out what you would have enjoyed more and be better suited for is going and volunteering for a wildlife rehabilitator and eventually becoming a rehabber yourself. Or maybe you got interested in birds of prey and you were volunteering for Hawk Watch and you're doing a banding station, helping trap migrating sharp shin hawks, handle them, uh, band them, record them, set them free. But you really want something more. You want to build a more of a relationship. And it turns out falconry is a better avenue for you to fly and hunt with and see this more in action or maybe the opposite maybe you get into falconry and you love having some close contact with raptors but you'd be better to go volunteer for hawk watch and like you know a few weekends a year i go and volunteer at a banding station and i get to see birds of prey up close i get to handle them for a couple of minutes and that's enough for me i don't actually have the time or patients right now in my life to be able to actually care full time for a raptor and falconry. So the that please remember that if you're watching this video because you're interested, I have had a number of apprentices this way that they got into falconry, they flew a bird for a year or two years, and then realized they would rather volunteer for a wildlife rehabilitator or get into education. And I've helped them on that way. I'm like, let me. Here's some other people you can meet and go on that journey, and it's been much better for them. And uh, keep that in mind. I think it's re that's really crucial. Um, so again, remember, true falconry is hunting with a trained raptor. Plain and simple, that is what it is. It is about hunting. It is about getting your bird to have as close to a wild experience as possible in terms of flight time and pursuing game. That is the goal of falconry. That is the point of falconry. That is what it is. And that is also why in the United States, why it is regulated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that regulates hunting instead of being regulated by the Department of Agriculture, which does things more like pets and domesticated animals and agricultural animals. That's the reason why, because it is a hunting sport. Now, you can evolve. I have known people who got into falconry because they were a young kid and they're like, wow, it'd be so cool to have a hawk. And then they evolve, they mature as they learn what is expected and they eventually become great falconers. Um, you have people who get into it for wrong reasons. I want to look cool in front of my friends. I'm a little socially awkward, but I have a passion for animals and animals are a way that I can live life deeply and richly and be unique in front of my peers. And so it's, it's kind of a shallow, legitimate, but shallow reason. And then again, after a year or two in, they evolve that depth and understand, yes, this is about hunting. This is about flying. This is not about seeming special in a selfie photo. So um, things can change. Things, people can evolve and adapt. But it, always ask yourself, what am I doing falconry for? And if you are getting into it and you've started, remember, that is your goal, is to hunt with your bird, not just keep your bird and have it look pretty on a fist. That's that's not what falconry is at all. And if that's the direction you're feeling, perhaps it's wiser to get in a different field where you can also work with raptors. So my, I hope that this video does not sound preachy. I have for years now worked the, as hard as I can to build bridges with all of these different groups, to uh, especially between falconers and rehabilitators. When I got into it when I was young, it seemed every falconer and every wildlife rehabilitator were just like hated each other's guts out. And I'm like, why? I don't understand. We all love birds of prey. We all want to help them. We all want to uh, preserve their numbers and conserve them in the wild. So what's the what's the problem here? So please try to be friendly. Try to be open minded. If you are in any of these groups, falconer or otherwise, please always remember that people in these other groups are passionate as well. And instead of uh, spreading hate, instead of spreading bitterness or anger or false things, um, 
try not to. Try to actually learn firsthand. Talk to somebody from one of these other groups. Ask them, why do you love Birds of Prey? What got you into this? What, 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 what are you most passionate about in these fields? And we can make more connections that way. So I hope this video is useful to you. Uh, please check out my other videos and feel free to subscribe. It really helps me build up the channel. And as always, happy hawking. <laughs>